Hello everyone. Today I will be making ethyl bromide, also known as bromoethane. To start this reaction, you will need the following reactants. 140 grams of sodium bromide. I got mine from Home Depot in the pool section. Here's what the package looks like. You'll also need 160 milliliters of sulfuric acid. Mine is the plumbing variety. Next, 148 milliliters of ethanol, or in this case, Everclear. And last, you'll need 100 milliliters of water. Now I need to set up to add the sulfuric acid to the ethanol and do so without heating it up. I place a large bowl of ice on top of a homemade magnetic stirrer. Then I place a three-neck flask with the sulfuric acid in a set funnel on top. Begin by pouring in the ethanol and water. Then start the magnetic stirrer and let the mixture cool down. Once it's cool, begin to very slowly, drip by drip, add the acid. Here's what mine looked like after I was done. You can set it aside for now. Now I need to set up for distillation. Here's how I set mine up. First, get a sturdy stand with a strong clamp. Next, place in your heating mantle. Then, add the three neck flask with the mixture you just made. Next, install your condensing column, thermometer, and receiving flask. The flask will need 50 milliliters of water in it, and then place the flask in an ice bath. The water will keep the ethyl bromide cold and keep it from vaporizing since it will sink below the water. Ethyl bromide has an extremely low boiling point, so the water acts as a makeshift cap to hold it in. And last, set up the optional overhead mixer. Now turn up the heat, start the mixer, and slowly add the sodium bromide. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, since hydrogen bromide is a gas, we're forming it in situ, where it is rapidly esterified without appreciable loss. So for this purpose, a solution of ethyl hydrogen sulfate is made by adding sulfuric acid to an excess of ethanol. Sodium bromide is added and the liberated hydrogen bromide reacts with the ethyl hydrogen sulfate giving ethyl bromide or bromoethane. Since the mixture is heated the ethyl bromide boils off and is collected in the receiving flask. The reaction continues until no more boils over. When no more ethyl bromide is coming over or the temperature reaches about 70 degrees C turn off the heat and remove the receiving flask. Pour its contents into a SEP funnel the bottom layer is ethyl bromide and the top is water. Remove the bottom layer and save it, then discard the top layer. Now pour the ethyl bromide back into the SEP funnel and add to it 30 milliliters of a 10% solution of sodium carbonate and water to remove any trace sulfuric acid. Mix thoroughly, remembering to vent often. When done, once again remove the bottom layer and save and discard the top layer. Once again, add the ethyl bromide back to the SEP funnel and wash with equal amount of ice-cold distilled water. Keeping the ethyl bromide cold through all of these washes is very important. As the solution heats up, you'll begin to lose product due to the low vapor pressure of ethyl bromide. After thoroughly washing with water, drain the bottom layer into a flask and add about 5 grams of calcium chloride to it. This will remove any excess water. I put mine on a stir plate and stirred for about 20 minutes just to be safe. Finally, pour your dry ethyl bromide in a bottle and screw on the cap airtight. You will need to store the bottle in a freezer, and by freezer I mean a lab freezer, not a freezer you store your food in. Ethyl bromide freezes at negative 119 degrees C, so to it, even your freezer is warm. We'll be using what we make here in the future. Until the next video, thanks for watching.